Um, I was pretty lucky. I was raised by my great grandmother, and due to my mom and dad being fourteen when I was born, um, I was one of those little boys. I had uh, Barbie dolls. I had He-Man. I had Lego. I was tea sets. I was never told that was for boys and that was for girls. Uh, I remember my uncles saying a few things. Um, I think like Graham, Nana, and Miss Curry had mentioned, you know, the playing with mum's makeup while well, I used to play with Nan's makeup. Um, not a word was said, uh, it was all good and as I got older like I saw nothing wrong with it, it wasn't until I got into the real world and children can be cruel but that's things that they are taught by judgmental parents and things like that. Um, also growing up through high school I was one of those boys who'd be, uh, if I had a down day and people teasing me, I'd be one of those boys locked in my room dancing in the mirror to Madonna or Kylie or whoever made me happy and I've always loved dancing and performing. And back home, uh, they used to call me a budgigan, which was the bunch of long word for poofta, faggot, queer. But the real meaning of budgigan is cat. And one of my biggest inspirations, apart from Madonna and Olivia and what have you, is uh, the one and only Eartha Kitt. Uh, reading her life story and doing research on her, what she'd gone through in her career for speaking her mind and speaking the truth when asked a question and people couldn't handle that. Also in being exiled from your country, what that would have been felt like just for being honest. Coming to Australia in that exile and meeting Aboriginal people up in the Northern Territory, she also became our international ambassador from 1973 to 1977 and I just think resilience and spirit like that is amazing. What is unique about being an Aboriginal drag queen performance artist and why did you decide to do it? Well most importantly I think it would be our culture, uh, bringing that element into mainstream commercial drag performance art, um, bring in some diversity, something different that you don't see. Um, you know, I can do my Kylie and Madonna and things like that, but then I can also bring a little element to it, whether it be paint or plapsticks, just bring in my culture in that way and tell stories. So you've been in Sydney now for about 15 years or so? I came here in, uh, at the end of 2002 to attend Naysda Dance College, um, to continue on my dance training, but due to my mother's disappearance I had to pull out, so yes, I've been here 14 years. And you're quite well known now, with, at least within the uh, indigenous drag scene. Yes, and the commercial scene as well. I started there and got to know everybody and make some great friends and inspiration, yes. Also, one year at Mardi Gras, I had an idea to be the Aboriginal Wonder Woman. I had a, a dear friend who's an amazing costume designer, um, Michael Gates, aka Maud Boat. Uh, helped me design a Wonder Woman outfit, which then was seen by Anukuna Osmob, AH, the National Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander HIV Alliance. And they loved my look and thought that I'd be a great look for their next promotion in sexual health awareness in Australia. And I got to travel the country with that and meet a lot of interesting, beautiful people and also get an education. What have been some of the highlights of your career? Um, well, I guess Tropical Fruits back home where I started, that's been a highlight as I'm still with them today and they've helped me become and flourish to be the performer and, performer and star I am today and then it would have to be leading the uh, annual Sydney Gay and Lesbian Mardi Gras parade on behalf of the first Australians and Mardi Gras are uh, such a privilege, never in my wildest dreams. Um, I carry that very dearly to my heart as well. What would you hope to do by traveling with an Aboriginal drag performance group overseas? Ah, oh, that's easy. Take our culture to the world. Like each one of us comes from a different nation of Aboriginal Australia. Um, there is the same, same elements, but then there is also the diversity of difference. Um, we're all unique in our own way and just to show the world who Aboriginal, aspect of who and what Aboriginal people are and how far we have come in the last 220, 30 years. It's not that long ago. My mother's been a missing person now for 16 years. Still have no answers, no closure. Um, but that, it's not a bad thing. I think that's what keeps me going. And you know, we've all got a story to tell. We've all, like I said, been through adversity, but it's what we choose to do with it. And that's where destiny has arrived comes from because that is what magic is all about.
and magic isn't pulling rabbits out of hats and abracadabra, maybe it is. Magic to me is coincidence and synchronicity and when you have that feeling that you're doing the right thing and you're in the right place and that's destiny.